Morning everyone, Mr. Kennedy here. I've got another Onshape video for you this morning. Today we're going to have a look at assembly and multiple parts and how you can join those together. In the last video we made this, we started to make this little train here. Looks a bit like a cross between a car and, a, and an old steam engine. Now, where we got up to was pretty much obviously what you can see here. Um, where we, we sort of last, uh, last video I taught you about filleting and chamfering and we added some of these details like the window and the chimney here where we learnt about how your, your sketches don't need to be within the sketch plane, they can go outside that, it's just a reference point. So that's what we did last time. You could use those skills to go and add some more details if you want. You could put headlights on the front, maybe a grill, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But what I want to focus on today is how we can start to assemble multiple parts. So let me just change my face here, I'll move down here and I'll get out of the way so we can see a bit more. Now. There are a number of different ways in Onshape that you can deal with multiple parts. Just really quickly, you don't need to follow this, but just as an example, if I was to do a sketch on the side of this wheel arc here, and I was to grab the center of that line, draw myself a wheel, give it a diameter of 15, and then extrude it out, so you can see how fast CAD is once you get used to it. Say I wanted it to be, yep, 7.5 is fine. Now this is still one part. If I was to export these parts, it would export as one body. When you're extruding, what you can do up here is just change this to new. I think I briefly talked about this in a previous video, but what that will do is this is now a it's a single part studio, and that'll become more relevant in a moment, with multiple parts inside the studio. Now, the, the advantage to that is what I can actually do, let's say I wanted to go and 3D print this train, I wanted to start to manufacture this, and I wanted this wheel to be a separate part. When I go to export this, which just to do that by the way, I can right click on this tab down here and choose export. What I can actually do is tick a box that says export unique parts as individual files. What this will let me do is all of the parts that are listed here in part 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. will all be exported as separate files and then I can go and lay them out on the 3D printer separately and start to manufacture them individually. Sometimes it can be a lot easier to just quickly add a new part here by extruding it and referencing the model that you've already got here, um, positioning things the way that I did there where I was able to tell it to snap to the middle of that line and extrude it as a new part. But sometimes you need more complex stuff that will join together. Um, I do have an example here that I can show you of that. It may take a, a minute to load because it's it's fairly hefty. It's a fairly big uh, part studio here, so I might just go to a smaller sub-assembly. Okay, that's okay. So here's a really complex thing that I modeled early on in the Onshape days. And there are multiple parts. There are obviously heaps of parts here. There are multiple assemblies, and those assemblies can mount onto other assemblies. And what I mean by that is, if we have a look at this one, should only take a second to load here. So this assembly is two parts. There's this cylinder, which was just a rod of sorts, and there's this bearing. And I can actually grab this bearing and slide it up and down and spin it around this rod just because of the particular way that I've assembled it. If I had modeled this bearing as a second part within the same studio as this rod, it wouldn't allow for that. What I've been able to do then, once I've made this assembly, is I can come to a sub... Oh, so this was another one. Um, I'd have to have a quick search through here. Okay, so here, for example, I've got, you know, those same rods are being used again and those same bearings are being used again, but in a different orientation and in a different way. So the advantage of using assemblies is that you can take something that's in a part studio, insert it in different orientations, and you can use those assemblies and insert the assembly into a new assembly and, and start to get some really detailed stuff. Now, all of that might be a bit overwhelming. So let's jump back into our train video and we'll start to break it down in a fairly easy way. So I'm going to just undo what I've done here by deleting the wheel and deleting a sketch. This is where we were up to a minute ago. So if all of that was a little bit overwhelming, that's cool. We'll start now in quite an easy way and I'll show you how to make another part studio, make our wheel, and then I'll start to talk about how you can use the assembly functions to attach those. So I've got a part studio here. If you come down to this little plus, you can see there's also an assembly. Every time you make a file, you get a blank assembly. We're going to use that in a minute. But first we need to make our wheel. So if you go plus, you can create a new part studio. And that will come up down here as a second tab. You can also insert 
uh, you know, you can import Word documents or other or PDFs and reference files that you're using. Maybe you're working on a massive project with a bunch of people and you've got some other information that's relevant. You want everyone to see it. You can import that here and it will all come up in these tabs down the bottom. In this case, though, I've just got Part Studio 2. And what I just determined, because I made this train and I know the numbers here, so I know that this is a radius 9, so that's an 18 millimeter circle. Um, I know how deep this wheel arc is 5 millimeters, so I know how big I want this wheel to be. So if I quickly make a wheel, so sketch on my front plane, I'm going to use a center point circle, lock it onto the origin point. I'm just going to make a random size circle, so I made that really big just to prove a point, and I'm going to use my dimension tool to change the diameter of that. Now I just remember that the wheel arc is 18 millimeters diameter. I want this to be a little bit smaller than that, so I might go 16 millimeters diameter. That'll do. And I'm going to extrude it to, like I did a moment ago, I thought that looked good, 7.5 millimeters big. And now, like we talked about in our last video, I can turn off some of the vision of these planes just to make that a bit easier to see. And now I want this to have a bit more detail on my wheel. So really quickly, I'm going to use another one of the tools that I've already shown you, which is the pattern tool. But we're going to start to look at patterning... Uh, trying to figure out where my camera is there, that's a bit of fun, trying to do here circular patterning. So for example, if I just use, so here's my wheel, and I add a few details here. I'm going to cut some holes for some spokes. So here's going to be the edge of the spoke holes. Here's going to be the inside of the spoke hole, so this becomes like a hub. And then I'm going to use a line tool to join a line from there to there. And then I might use another line tool to go from there to there. Oops. Oh, I need that to lock onto the center like the other one did, so I'll just do it like that. Now I can use the dimension tool to actually set the angle between these two lines just by hitting D for dimension, clicking on the first one as if I was setting the length, and then clicking the second line, and now dragging where I can set the angle here. So maybe I do 30 degrees. Now what I can do is I can actually you can do this like we did before. You can do the pattern here in sketch mode, or I can stop my sketch, cut that hole out, and then I can extrude the hole. So I'll show you both ways quickly. Circular pattern inside the sketch. What are the entities that I want to pattern? This line and this line. How many times do I want to pattern them? Maybe five times. That's it. You can change this to say, well, I want there to be five times, but I only want to do that around 180 degrees. You can play with that. In this case, I want it to be the full wheel. Whoops, just hit the wrong button. Uh, rotary pattern around there, five times, done. Click to accept it. Here's my all my things. Now I can hit accept. I can grab an extrude tool, and I can come and choose the segments that I want to cut out. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Remove through all. There's my wheel with a bit more detail. Alternatively, what I could do is oh, I'll just redo. So let's just pretend that inside this sketch I didn't have a pattern and I had just done this one segment. I could cut that out through all in case I ever want to change the thickness of the wheel. I want it to still go through all. And then I can use up here circular pattern. Remember to change that to a feature pattern. I want to, I want to pattern that extrude feature. What's my axis? You can choose any circle or line that has the same axis as what you want. And I want to do that five times. And that will give you the exact same result. It's just a different way to do it it actually adds a step on your feature tree because the first way the pattern would have been inside this sketch and you only have one extrude. But it doesn't matter. So anyway, there's my wheel. Let's say that's done. I finished it and now I want to insert that four times and assemble it by linking it onto the side of the train in the correct spot in four times. So what I'm going to do first, I can't actually insert that here into my part studio. I'm going to insert my train and four wheels over here into the assembly video, uh, into the assembly tab. So to start, we're going to come up the top and choose insert, and you'll start to see all the part studios and all the parts. If you do have multiple parts, in one studio, like I showed you before, you could press the down arrow here to see all the individual parts that have come up in one studio. In this case, I'm going to start by inserting my train. If you just single click on that, what it does is it, it takes the origin point 
from within that part studio and it links it onto the origin point within this assembly. As soon as I move my mouse off this tab though, it lets me drag this around and place it wherever I want. I do want it to be centered around the original origin or the origin within the assembly. I don't want it to be confusing. So I'm going to move my mouse back onto this tab and then I'm going to hit tick so that my train stays centered in the screen. Now the first thing I'm going to do, if I was now to start inserting wheels and attaching them, annoyingly this train would kind of spin around and go off into the middle of nowhere as it needs to move around to attach to the wheels. So what I'm going to do is, before anything happens, I'm going to right click this body, this train, and I'm going to choose Fix. That will mean that no matter what happens, I can't move it around. If I just undo to get rid of that fix, what you'll see is if I grab this train, I can drag it away. It lets me move it. If I right click it and go fix, now I try and click and drag it, I get a no symbol. You can't drag it, it won't let me move it, it's fixed to this specific location. I can pan my screen around still, and I can rotate my screen around, but I can't grab that body and drag it away. Okay, so here's my train, I want to start to insert some wheels. Insert, I'm just going to do it one at a time. So here's a wheel and I'm going to hit tick. I've just put it in anywhere. If you I'll undo that, if I insert a wheel and I keep my, my mouse up here and hit tick, that's fine. It'll just insert it in the middle of the train, but because it's not fixed, you can grab it and drag it away. Now, how do we attach this to the side? I'll show you first how I can just fix it on, as if it was super glue. How do we super glue this to the side of the train? And then what I'll do is I'll show you another way how you can, I'll undo that, and I'll show you how you can attach the wheel so that it, and it allows it to spin. So what I can do up the top here, I've got, while I'm in the assembly tab, I've got all of these assembly functions. These are sort of different methods of joining that allow specific types of movement. So this one, for example, is called Fastened Mate. A Fastened Mate is like superglue. It'll lock it in place. A Revolute Mate, like I was just saying, will allow revolutions. That's what I'm going to use second. A Slider Mate is like what you saw a minute ago when I had that... Uh, no, this would allow like a bearing to slide up and down a rod or something to slide up and down a rod without any rotation. Whereas this one, cylindrical mate, allows it to slide up and down and revolve at the same time. So it's sort of a combination of this one and this one. But anyway, we'll learn those gradually. For now, what I'm going to use is this fastened mate. If you click on this, this can be tricky to explain. So try and stay with me. What it wants me to do here is it wants me to choose two points and pay attention to their orientation and it's going to connect those two points together. Because my train is fixed, what it's going to do is it, when I choose the two points, it'll bring my wheel from here, it'll slide it over and attach it onto my train body and it'll connect those two mates in a specific way. So click on that tool and we're going to choose a fastened mate and it's blue inside this box, it wants me to choose my first mate connector. Now what you'll notice is when you start to move and hover your mouse over your train, it grabs any of these surfaces. I like to use Pac-Man as a bit of an example. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Google Pac-Man. Hopefully everyone, young generation, knows what that is. It was before my time, I never played it. So hopefully you know what it is. Now when you hover over this, you can see a couple of things. I can't point at my screen to show you, so this is pretty tricky because my mouse might get in the way here. The first thing you can see is there's a little symbol here that kind of looks a bit like Pac-Man. You can see he's got that shape with his mouth open. The other thing we get is a whole bunch of white dots all over the thing. Now Pac-Man wants to eat the white dots. That's the whole point of that game. And it's the same thing here. I've got to tell Pac-Man which white dot to eat. AKA, where is my mate connector? Which one of these white dots is going to be the first mate connector? Now I want to attach my wheel over here. So I'm going to hover over this surface and it gives me three options of white dots. I can choose this one, this one, and it's really tricky, you can't, so for example, I couldn't actually click that one because this surface is in the way. If I move my mouse there, it's letting me connect to a different surface. So if I wanted to choose that bottom left one, I'd have to rotate my camera around and now I could click on that one. Now, this is an important thing to make note of. So I actually want to choose this one because I want to attach my wheel down the bottom. However, if I hover down here, if I move my camera down here and hover over this bottom face, I can still also grab that same white dot. However, what you'll notice is Pac-Man is facing a different way. 
If I do this, he's kind of lying down, and what you need to pay attention to is that blue line. You can see the blue line that comes out perpendicular to Pac-Man. That is what we have to pay attention to. I have to choose two mate connectors, and what the program is going to do is it's going to line up those blue lines. I can tell it to line up this way, or I can tell it to line up this way, and that's what's important. It's those blue lines you have to pay attention to. So, if I was to click here, and then I went and chose the one on my wheel, say I want to choose the one on my wheel that's pointing like this out from the wheel, now my wheel will be sort of pointing off the bottom as if you've got like a back to the future car and the wheel is a hovering thing and you're flying, which is not what we want. I want it on the side like a normal wheel. So it's important that when you place your mate connector, you pay attention to which way Pac-Man is lying and where that blue line is pointing. So I want to choose this mate connector here. Now, nothing's happened, but Pac-Man's a bit faded out there to say, okay, you've locked that one in, and now I have to go and choose my second mate connector. So I'm going to come over to my wheel. In this case, because of how I've modeled the wheel, it doesn't actually matter whether I choose this one or this one. You just sort of got to orient your camera so you can see. And again, when I hover over this face, you get all sorts of options. In this case, I want to choose this center one and straight away you can see that it's moved my wheel over into place. Now what you could actually do, this gives you a lot of control. So if I just hit accept, done. That's it. It's super glued in place. You can also do things, you can flip the axis, so that will tell, okay, I want, like I was just saying with the two lines, do I want it to go this way or this way? So flip will let you do that. You can set a revolve, so you can, you can spin it around that axis a certain number of degrees. You can actually set an offset, so I could tell it to move however far away, so they'd be locked in together, but with a gap between them and so on. So now, for example, there's a five millimeter gap between these. You have a lot of control. So now if I do, you know, minus 0.5 millimeters, my wheel is fastened in there. I can't move it. It's attached to this body, but there's a gap. So, that the, you know, like, a, like realistically, the wheel is not running into the car. Sure, I don't have an axle, but you get the idea. So that's how you do a super glue mate. Now this is getting to be a long video, so I want to do this last bit pretty quickly. I'm going to delete that or undo, so just to show you the next, another option. So delete. Now I can move this away again. Now I could choose revolute mate. Do exactly the same thing. My first Pac-Man point is that one. Hover over the right face, pay attention to the blue line and grab the white dot. Pivot your camera around and grab the same thing on the wheel. I won't set my offset just to save a bit of time and hit accept. Now, it is exactly the same. It doesn't let me slide the wheel out from the car. It doesn't let me move it around this way. Those two blue lines are locked together. But what it does let me do is grab the wheel and rotate it just like a real wheel. So uh, what I want you to do now is go ahead and attach the other three wheels. Okay, I've just, I've just paused the video and attached mine, and that's it. The last thing that I'll quickly show you is that if you go back to your Wheel Part Studio, you could right-click on the part and actually choose Edit Appearance, and you could change the color of that wheel. So if I make it sort of a dark gray, and then I come back to my assembly, it'll apply that to all four of those. You could, you could do that. So I might quickly do my terrain to be red, and now I've got, you know, a... In my assembly, I've got a red train with black wheels, which is looking pretty cool. So you could add some more details, and we can probably call that train done. And we'll move on to, uh, in the next video, we might do a little rocket ship that teaches you some more complex sketch tools to get a lot more control and detail in your sketches. Anyway, thanks for tuning into this one, guys, and I'll see you in that next video.